So one quick find before our final destination. Yes. We are coming back here to finish up some unfinished business. We were here a couple weeks ago and it was very, very late at night. It was dark. Creepy. Creepy according to Chris. <laughs> and she didn't want to be the only vehicle in this entire IKEA parking lot. Uh, and figured all the security guards were going to come over here and beat us up. Bag needs a little health bit. This is an example of how good the smartphone apps, in particular my iPhone geocaching app, has gotten. without the need of even using the GPS. Well, we are after our chirp cache now. Um, still trying to figure out exactly how people use these things. I guess I'm a little confused since you can get within about, what, 50 feet of it or so, um, and your GPS detects that it's there and basically tells you a secret message or something, um, or potentially just the coordinates to where the actual cache is. Um, seems a little un -geocache like to me with the whole not even having to find the container to get the next coordinates. Um, so I'm, we're going to get our first one here and figure out how this all works and see uh, if it's something that actually makes sense for geocaching or not. So when we get within like 50 feet this thing is supposed to just find it um, and show chirp details. So we're going to see how this works here. Welcome to Chirp 101. I think we're probably about a hundred feet from it right now. Let's see if it, if it gets it. Dun, dun, dun. Chirp detected. Okay, we didn't even have to get out of the car. We just drove up <laughs> and it grabbed the information. Well, let's see what it gives us here. You may have to blur that out, honey. No, I know. So basically it's a multi. Kind of. Yeah, so basically it's a multi. The chirp now, without us having to even get out of the car, gave us the information we need to go to the next stage. So it's a multi. Uh, even though Geocaching has defined all chirps have to be mystery caches, although a mystery cache with a chirp attribute. Um, so this is telling us that 0.42 miles away from here, um, with coordinates provided, is the next, next stage. stage. It doesn't indicate it's the final stage, but it says it's the next stage. So I guess we're going to go over there and find out if it's another, it could be another chirp, technically. True. So, we'll Let's find see. out. If I press go, will it actually... If you press go, it actually plugs in the coordinates so you don't have to pro program in. Perfect. Alright, recording. Well, it's pretty much just a multi. Um, it, gives, it gives you the chirp, it gives you coordinates to the next stage, which was final cache. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth the investment, <laughs> unless there's some other fun way to use it, I guess. To me, it just seems like a... Uh, a expensive little way to make someone have to get close to stage one um, and then it just gives any part of the stage two so in my mind a little matchstick container is a cheap way to do it so I'm very curious to see if there's a progression in how these things are used um, I personally don't see myself buying one anytime soon Chris mentioned uh, any other uses for the chirp other than just it, it as communicating coordinates to the next. Uh, there was a new chirp published probably within the last week or so. Uh, from what I understand, it is a little different in the fact that it just, it doesn't give you the chords. It actually gives you other information which you need to then solve for it. It's an actual puzzle puzzle. 
someone was very rude about that and didn't give you the actual coordinates. So uh -huh. anyway, so that might be worth uh, taking a peep at. to it across the way is caribou coffee so if that gives you a good point of reference where this might be like I said that's our guess where we think the great American restaurant is going to be in Minneapolis 